Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to teach myself how to play out with Mark. Scruffy Crow. <laughs> okay, so I'm making this video. This is after my first game, and this is my second attempt at filming this exact video. Uh, the first time around, I got so many rules wrong, it wasn't worth making. I found the rules for Oath Mark to be quite confusing when the first time you read them. Uh, things like the morale checks, I had to reread a few times, and actually the only way I really found to get my head around them was to uh, roll some dice. So hopefully I'm going to make a video now uh, that goes through the basic mechanics of the game um, and sort of clears it up in case anyone's looking to learn and get their first game played. The main things I'm going to be looking at are going to be shooting, morale checks, and then combat, which should cover you for most situations in your first couple of games. Okay, in order to illustrate these rules, I've enlisted the help of a couple of units uh, from a couple of armies. Uh, we've got a couple of dwarves, my dwarf archers from Conqueror Miniatures and some EM4 line breakers with a Milton hero. Um, and you can see all the videos for those on my channel. And a few of my old um, Warhammer Fantasy Battle slash Kings of War Night Goblins. Uh, these are multi-based and on the wrong size bases. But these trays give them the right footprint roughly and uh, I've got the back ranks separate for, uh, for the specific model count. Okay, so the first rule you're going to encounter is going to be initiative. Both sides take 2d10 and they roll off and the player with the highest number out of the four, uh, in which case is a 10 for the dwarves, uh, takes the initiative. The next rule uh, that you'll uh, encounter while playing Earthmark is going to be activation. So I'm going to choose to activate my archers first. Um, to do this, I'm, they have an activation stat of four, and I just need to roll over four on one of these two dice. Later in the game, they might be modifiers to this. Uh, but at this point, it is as simple as that. I've achieved a nine, uh, so they can make two normal movements. They're going to choose to move forward just a few inches and make a shoot action at the Spearman. Okay, let's look at shooting. The archers have five models on their front rank, which gives me five dice. They have a shoot of two, while the goblins have a defense of nine, which takes it down to seven. They also have two additional ranks after their first, which takes it down to five. However, they did just move a few inches, uh, and moving and shooting takes another one down. Uh, is a negative modifier, so that takes them back up to six. So all they need to do is score a six or more on these five dice. As we can see, they have one, two, three, and four successes, and one failure. This instantly does four casualties to the goblins. There's no saves in this game. And shooting is as simple as that. All you have to do is check down the modifier chart and check off what each one that applies. So the next rule that we come across is the morale check rule, because the goblins having taken casualties now need to take a morale check. They have a base activation of six, and they've taken four casualties, which takes it all the way up to 10. However, the attack was from a shooting attack, which is less scary than a close combat attack, so that takes it back down to nine. They also have their two front ranks in play still, uh, which takes that down, one per each rank, back down to seven. So they need 2d10, and all they need to do is get a seven or more on these two dice. They're fine. If they had failed this roll, they would have become disordered. My archers have now activated. And I'm gonna mark that off uh, with one of my activation tokens. You can see how I made them in one of my other videos. So now it is the goblins turn to activate. So we'll go through shooting again, uh, this time hopefully a little bit smoother. The goblin archers are gonna use their first action to wheel. Where are they? I'm gonna pivot on this one corner just to straighten up. Uh, so movement or wheeling, uh, both count as an action. So they will be minus one to hit. They're now gonna shoot at the dwarves. They have clear line of sight and they have a 20 inch range. More than enough. Once again, they have 
five models on their front rank, which gives them five dice. They have a shoot of one, whereas my line breakers have a defense of 11, which takes their first number down to 10. They get a bonus of two more for the ranks after the first, which takes it down to eight. But they moved, so that goes back up to nine. So now they need nine or above to cause casualties in the line breakers. And there we go, they've scored one 10. So they've scored one casualty in the line breakers. And the line breakers must now take a morale check. They have a base activation of four, going up to five for the casualty. Um, this is from a shooting attack, so that goes back down to four. They also have their first two ranks. Uh, so that actually goes back to down to two. So such a disciplined unit, taking only one casualty from shooting, actually has a better chance of keeping its morale up than um, just activating in the first place. They have easily passed that, but as you can see, I did run it one, two. It is possible, even in a situation like this, that the unit might become disordered even from a single casualty. It is now the turn of the dwarves again. This unit will activate on a four plus. They, even with their low number, have failed to activate, uh, which means they can only take a simple action. And this can be a move. So they're gonna move their move distance forward, which is four inches. The goblins uh, are gonna try and activate their spear unit. They have an activation of six. They have also failed to activate. So they can only take a single, single action, but they have a move of six inches. And that is the end of a turn. Both players will now roll for initiative again. And the eights cancel each other off and the remaining dice uh, gives the activation to the dwarves. I'm gonna activate my large unit of dwarves and they require four again, which they have achieved e easily. They're now gonna move six inches, which brings them into contact with the goblins. And here we see the final set of rules that I'm gonna cover in this video, combat. So in a combat, both units fight simultaneously, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna work them out one at a time. First, we'll start with the dwarves. As they have five dwarves on the front rank, they would have five combat dice. But I've decided this guy is a champion. So instead of five normal dice, I'm gonna have four dice of one color and substitute one of them for this gold dice. That will represent, that will represent my champion. Any hits scored with this dice uh, will cause double the amount of damage. So my dwarves have a fight of three and the goblins have a defense of nine, which takes me all the way down to six. I now only have one additional rank as this one doesn't count because we've lost, it's not a full rank of five. So that will take me down to five. Uh, there are no other uh, modifiers, I don't think for this one. So I'm looking for fives on these dice. So the doors are doing quite well. We have a five, a six, a seven, most importantly, and another seven. So that is three wounds from the normal guys, plus two more from the champion. So that is a whole rank of these guys that have died. But because the combat takes place simultaneously, for the purpose of the goblins counter attack, um, they will still be there. The goblins don't have a champion, so I'll be rolling five dice, all of the same colour. Goblins movement have the lowly fight of one, once again against the defence of 11 on my line breakers. So they go down to 10. They have one, two full ranks, because even though these have become casualties, because these combat is simultaneous, they still exist, uh, which takes them down to eight. And despite being outclassed somewhat, they've still managed to score two solid hits on the dwarves. However, the dwarves took more casualties than the goblins, so they win combat. So they get to choose whether to move the goblins back one inch or six inches. Both sides took casualties, so they both need to make, take morale checks. The goblins, took five casualties from that. On top of their activation of six, 
that is 11. They still have both their first front ranks, so that takes it back down to nine. So they need a nine or more on one of these two dice, which they did not achieve. So this unit has now become disordered. This affects their effectiveness in battle, affects pretty much all their rolls, and if they fail another morale check, they will be wiped off the board. Just to complete the video, the dwarves have two damage. They've still got both their front ranks, so that cancels each other out. Uh, so they'll be rolling on their base activation of four. And they're fine, as to be expected. So I hope that helped clear up any rules uh, for someone who's about to play this for the first time. Um, it would certainly have helped me if I'd have seen something like this before I started playing. And it also demonstrates the eliteness over dwarves against these puny goblins. As I said, I hope that helped. If you want to see any more videos like this, or if you thought this was a good idea, let me know down in the comments. And I might look into doing a few more of the advanced rules. If I got anything wrong, definitely tell me in the comments. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.